So this video is just about everything you need to know about a spendthrift trust. I'm Paul Rabelais, I'm an estate planning attorney. Gonna try to keep this in layman's terms to keep it simple. The reason I'm um, inspired to make this video today is my son and I were having a conversation earlier today. My son's a fairly new lawyer and he ran across some issues involving a spendthrift trust. We had a good conversation about it. So that inspired me to stay here a little late on a Friday afternoon and maybe catch everybody up to speed on what that is. So. I'm gonna preface all this spendthrift trust language with an example. An example is grandpa died and he left $100,000 in a trust for his grandson, let's say, and he, uh, in the trust instrument, it says something like the money can be used for the grandchild's education and maybe for other certain reasons. And then when the grandchild reaches the age 35, that's what grand, grandpa picked, then remaining trust assets can be dispersed to the grandchild and the trust will terminate. So um, spendthrift trusts are typically used for two reasons. One, to prevent a beneficiary such as the grandchild from being able to voluntarily alienate their interest in the trust, which means they can't sell their interest in the trust, they can't use it as collateral for a loan. And then a spendthrift trust language is in a trust for another reason so that there can't be an involuntary, involuntary alienation of a trust, which means if um, grandson gets an erect or gets a judgment against him or has creditors, the creditor can't seize the beneficiary's interest in the trust. So I'm gonna take you through a, a few provisions of our Louisiana trust code because I'm a lawyer in Louisiana. Note that every state perhaps you know, has their own trust law. You wanna work with somebody in your state that really understands all of these spendthrift trust provisions. So first rule I'm gonna point out is if a, if a trust instrument doesn't provide to the contrary, then a beneficiary can transfer or encumber their interest in the trust. So we wanna make sure it's in there because that, that language isn't in there. And in my previous example, grandchild when he turns 18 says no i want the money now i'm going to sell my interest in the trust for a lot less than what it's worth or i'm going to use it as collateral for a loan and i'm going to go borrow a bunch of money against my trust interest grandpa doesn't want grandchild doing any of that so a making it a spendthrift trust prevents the grandchild from being able to do that okay so that's why in just about every trust we see that uh, spendthrift trust language okay so let me go to the books here and because i want to make sure i get it right uh, let's see where we are here. Okay. Um, now, uh, uh, a, in, a, in a trust instrument, when there is a restraint upon voluntary alienation, beneficiary can't sell his interest in the trust, beneficiary can't use it as collateral for a loan, that's always valid. When it's a restraint upon the involuntary, involuntary alienation, mm, meaning a creditor can't take it, from the beneficiary, that's subject to some provisions of our trust code, so let's take a look at that. When can a creditor of a beneficiary seize a beneficiary's interest? In general, two reasons. The first one is if the beneficiary's interest is subject to voluntary alienation. So if the trust for some reason permits a beneficiary to voluntarily alienate their interest, then a creditor of the beneficiary can go take it. So that's why we always say, nope, make it a spendthrift trust. Beneficiary is not permitted to voluntarily alienate their interest. And then the second scenario is when a beneficiary donates either directly or indirectly, indirectly their own property into the trust. So in our example, grandpa died, left $100,000 to a trust for grandchild. And so grandchild's interest is protected from involuntary alienation. But let's say grandchild, for some reason, kicked in another of his own $50,000 into the trust. Well, because grandchild had donated his own property to the trust, a creditor of grandchild can seize that part of the trust. There's a couple of other examples where after a court hearing and there was a judgment against the beneficiary, a creditor can seize a beneficiary's in interest in the trust if their a claim is based on a judgment for alimony. Or another example is if a claim is based on a judgment against a beneficiary for damages arising from a felony criminal offense committed by the beneficiary, which results in a conviction or a plea of guilty. I went through a few more of these in the podcast that I have, Estate Planning with Paul Rabelais, so feel free to address those. 
Okay, maybe the last point is, so when a trust is created, what's that language that needs to be in there to make it a spendthrift trust and prevent the beneficiary from voluntarily alienating their interest or prevents a creditor of a beneficiary from seizing the beneficiary's interest in the trust. So it's pretty clear. It says in our trust code that a declaration in a trust instrument that the interest of a beneficiary shall be held subject to a quote, spendthrift trust, close quote, is sufficient to restrain alienation by a beneficiary of the interest to the maximum extent permitted by this subpart or by this you know louisiana trust code so all you got to do it really is say that the interest of a beneficiary shall be held subject to a spendthrift trust and that gives the maximum spendthrift protections you could say other things that could potentially be just as effective but why not use the words that the trust code gives us so real important um, when you're setting up a trust when you're a beneficiary of a trust when you're trustee of a trust um, take a glance and see if these spendthrift trust provisions are in there. Now you can go back and watch the video again if you want to um, and really understand what all of that means. So go take care of this stuff. Leave a legacy for your family. They'll thank you for years, if not generations. One of the best things that you can do for your loved ones. I'm Paul Rabelais. Have a great day.